Kestens has just authored an impressive research report on Alzheimer's. It's a 100-page report on developments in the field, and he particularly focuses on four companies that are working in neurodegenerative diseases. So Cassava Sciences, BioV, Koya Therapeutics, and also Immune Bio. So I can't wait to hear about this, Carl, and what your research is. It sets out the, the state of play in Alzheimer's, discusses these four biotech companies in particular. What motivated you to do this research? Thanks, Jane. Thanks for having me. Basically, I've been seeing things since 2021. It all started with Cassava Sciences. That was actually the first company to report stabilization or improvement of cognition in Alzheimer's patients. But it wasn't the only one. A bit later, September 2021, really good data from Immune Bios Phase 1 trial came out. And if you look at the corporate presentation, even though they actually haven't communicated cognition data yet from the Phase 1 trial, you see that they are probably doing the same thing as Cassava had reported that same year. Then 2022 and 2023 saw Eli Lilly's data coming out and uh, Biogen ASI's data. So we know, I think we sort of know what the amyloid antibodies can do, which is slowing down cognitive decline by about one third. But obviously there's quite a way to go still. And then 2023 saw BioV and Koya also reporting small open label studies though stabilization or improvement in cognition. And so that was basically the motivation for me. I think I started seeing things that have, from the point of view of mecha mechanism of action of these drugs, that are looking very similar. And so I think these cognitive effects aren't just random. I think there's something there that, that I wanted to explore, and I've basically made it 100 pages. Okay, very interesting. And, and I think you're right. I feel like there's a lot of many breakthroughs that are happening in this Definitely, yeah. in this disease that's been just, you know, so difficult for so many years. So how do you stay on top of the uh, rapid advancements that are going on in biotech right now? I try to be omnipresent, so to speak. So I have an all quite a big investor network around me. I try to contact the companies once in a while for certain questions go on Twitter, well, it's called X these days, because there's a whole bunch of scientists actually constantly posting the latest scientific news on a whole set of companies and even just drugs or tests that they're doing preclinically. And so yeah, that's basically the way I stay on top. Each day I check whatever news is out. Yeah. Now you talk a lot about biomarkers in your mm -hmm. report, um, and in particular, these four companies that we cited. And you mentioned the big pharma anti-amyloid antibodies as well. So what can investors kind of glean from your report if they're looking to put money in a company? Well, the biomarker part of the report for me is really essential. As the CEO of Casava Sciences once stated, biomarkers don't lie. And so what we're seeing on cognition should actually already be visible before we're seeing cognitive efficacy. So if we're able to, and, and the scientific field's fully on board with this, only the investors many times don't know yet how to interpret these biomarker data. I see it many times. Many of these companies report data, for example, on, on a biomarker I really like, which is neurofilament light, NFL. And so they report these data and the data basically gets ignored, even though sometimes it's really good. And so I want to set out in my report, I want to make an overview of the reporting that's been done on the anti-amyloid side and then by these four companies. And I do see quite some similarities. And for example, that specific biomarker NFL, which has been accepted now in ALS, by the FDA, that's how the field's actually evolving, is really interesting because what we're seeing, both from Cassava Sciences, for example, and Immune Bio, is a really a major reduction in a vast, in a very fast period of time. And we also see that same, like, really fast onset if we're looking at Koya, for example, if we're looking at BioV. So there's something with these four treatment candidates that is very identical from um, efficacy point of view, uh, time of onset, no adverse events. So what I think investors can look for in, in that uh, report is basically uh, an analysis, including the risk analysis, because I make that quite big actually, an analysis to see whether one of these four or more of these four are worthwhile the investment. I, of course, I can't say, I don't say which is my favorite and I'm pretty much bullish on all four of them, but let's say the least, I think at least one of these four is actually going to make it to market one day. And I hope for them that they all do. 
Yeah, very interesting and important research because so much of the world is dealing with this. Now, is there one kind of headline or a takeaway or conclusion that you would say that comes out of this report? I think for me, my eyes fell out of my sockets when I was even researching and writing this report, when I saw that these four companies are having anti-inflammatory treatments, which many times also have two mechanisms of actions, and they're also trying to treat metabolic dysregulation. Now, the second term is a term often used in diabetes. Now, Alzheimer's is often seen as diabetes type three. Interestingly, there are a whole set of anti-diabetic drugs for the moment that are being repurposed for Alzheimer's. The most known one at this point is Ozempic, you know, the, the drug that basically works against obesity, now also against weight. And the difference here that I'm seeing is that drug and many of the drugs they only have one mechanism of action. The companies I'm looking at are mostly have drugs with two mechanisms of action. Why is that interesting? Because Alzheimer's is a multifactorial disease. There's basically a whole lot going on in each patient, but it's not necessarily the same. So if you want to, combination therapies are going to be uh, necessary at a given. We already see what anti-amyloid antibodies are doing. Once the amyloid is gone, because that's what they do, you can slow down cognition by 35%, but probably not more. So you're going to require combination therapies. That's also what the field is saying. So I think my conclusion from that report is, these companies are so interesting because they focus on perhaps more than one target. And that's probably the reason why we're seeing these kinds of data. Will it end here for you? Do you expect to update this report at some point? I do. For example, there is. Uh, I wanted to get this out there before the top line data from BioVeek. That's coming up in October, November. We're going to see Koya starting a phase two trial in ALS. That's their primary focus. We're going to see immune bio at a given point reporting from an open label extension uh, uh, that they're doing in their phase two trial. So I want to provide updates for investors and in the further future, perhaps do one on Parkinson's, perhaps do one in, in ALS. Right. Well, hopefully you'll come back and explain your updated findings. Um, really important work that you're doing in terms of solving this problem and kind of a, a piece of the whole puzzle. So thank you so much, Carl, for coming and sharing. Thank your you, Jay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good day.